Matter of fact, in speaking about keeping the heart with all diligence, going from the spiritual and going into the literal, the word diligence there means, matter of fact, when it says keep, it means we need to guard that organ. We need to guard the organ of the heart, and we need to do it with all diligence. Why? For out of it are the issues of life. The word issues there means out of it are the outgoings or the circulation of life. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11, the life of the flesh is in the... We must guard, we must keep, protect our hearts with all diligence. Why? Because this is the organ that God has developed to circulate the life-giving fluid of blood all throughout the body. And speaking of proper circulation, let's get to something that I know that you love, caffeine. Yes, I'm talking about your caffeine. You know, it's so interesting. You know, I left the church. I left the church when I was young. I left the church when I was young. But I remember when I came up in the Seventh-day Adventist church, they used to talk about caffeine being bad for you. And You remember that? I know some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. Because you never even heard these things before. But you're a baptized member in this church, though. Remember to hear about all these things, how they were bad for you. Brothers and sisters, caffeine is still bad for you, including your chocolate. People love to say, I don't drink any coffee. Well, brother, slap the chocolate cake off the plate too then. It's caffeine, brothers and sisters. Do you know that caffeine literally decreases the blood flow to the brain, the cerebral blood flow, by 27%. Did you hear that? Now, hold on a second. You already got a problem with sinning. Brother messed up with pornography. Sister, don't know how to stop lying. Sister, just put the phone down. Stop lying. Your willpower is shot, and then you're going to decrease the blood flow to your brain by 27%. Well, just throw yourself in the casket then. See you in the second resurrection. Because you've decreased your ability to, the, to yield to the Spirit of God by over a quarter of your already dwarfed brain. By 27%? Come on, brethren. I want you to see something. Oh, for all you chocolate lovers, for all you chocolate lovers, I learned some astounding effects. You know, it's amazing. When you start looking at things, you learn some things that are astounding to you. I don't even eat chocolate. It astounded me. So here it is. This is your average cup of coffee, right? Your average eight-ounce cup of coffee, depending on how strongly it's brewed, contains about 100 to 200 milligrams of caffeine, right? So if you break it down per milligram, you're talking about 12.5 milligrams to 25 milligrams per ounce. Are you following? That's for your average cup of coffee. You with me so far? Okay. Let's do it with your chocolate now. Your average one ounce of milk chocolate has five milligrams of caffeine in it. So it's not too far off. It's about, it's about a little shy of being half of the percentage of milligrams of caffeine that's in per one ounce of coffee. However, that's milk chocolate. Did you hear what I just said? That's milk chocolate. What's the big crave or what's the big thing that the... that, 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 that science is saying it's so good for you? It's dark chocolate, am I right? They're saying, oh, it's got flavonoids in it, antioxidants, healing cells, increases blood flow to the heart and to the brain. These flavonoids are great. Yeah, they tell you about the flavonoids, right? They tell you about the flavonoids, but they don't tell you about the caffeine, do they? Brothers and sisters, do you know that your average one ounce of dark chocolate has 40 ounces, 40 milligrams to 75 milligrams of caffeine in it. That trumps a cup of coffee. 
You love your dark chocolate though, huh? That completely trumps a cup of coffee. See, brethren, I'm telling you, this, the medical industry, it's the knowledge, it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They tell you, oh, you will not surely die. But they don't tell you about the other things. Yeah, see, they take the flavonoids, right? They say, oh, this, this thing called flavonoids inside of the dark chocolate, it's great. They take that one element, that one chemical, and they isolate it to itself and tell you all the good things about it. But there's something called synergistic effect. Have you ever heard of that before? Synergistic effect is when you take two agencies and combine them, it gives you a completely different effect if the agencies were by themselves. So they say the flavonoids increase the blood flow to the brain, they increase the blood flow to the heart, and they help cell reconstruction, yada, 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 right? Why don't they tell you about the high caffeine content that in connection with those flavonoids has to completely make null and void any type of increased blood flow, not to mention the nerve damage, and did I tell you earlier that it decreases 27% of blood flow to your brain? I'm just trying to get that out there for those people that are already sitting in here right now with 27 less percentage of blood flow flowing to their brain because they were eating chocolate and drinking coffee today. Brothers and sisters, it's serious. Just a little bit of chocolate, just a little bit of crack. just a little bit. I just need a little bit. I just, you just need a little piece. Go get a little piece of crack rock. It's just that foolish. Now who in here is going to smoke a little piece of crack rock? I'm sure we can find some around here. Are you going to smoke a little piece of crack rock for me today? Who's ready to be the first exhibitionist? So why are you going to drink some, why are you going to drink the coffee? Why are you going to eat a little, piece, a little bit of chocolate? Because it enfeebles your brain brothers and sisters, and it has long-term effects. Did you know that? Did you know that if you are consistent, if you are consistently intaking caffeine, that it has long-term effects on your brain? See, the adenosine receptors in your brain, they have to recalibrate themselves to actually be able to deal with the introduction of caffeine into your body. So even when you stop drinking the caffeine for a while, you're going to have that 27% decreased blood flow to the brain. Serious situation. Listen to this. Every organ of the body was made to be the servant of what? The mind. So how should you guard this? Every other organ of the body is made to be servant of the mind. So... Still with my brother, my sister, that's having problems with pornography because it's not just the brothers nowadays. If you look at the percentages, don't try to hide in your sisterly flesh. If you're having a problem with something like pornography, something that's ruling your baser passions, and you decrease the blood flow to your brain, which is the, which is the center of your will, how do you think you're going to gain the victory? Brothers and sisters, how are you going to do it? It's a virtual impossibility. The brain is the capital of the body, the seat of all the nervous forces and of mental action. The nerves proceeding from the brain control the body. By the brain nerves, mental impressions are conveyed to all the nerves of the body as by telegraph wires. You've seen telegraph wires before? Come on now. Ain't none of you seen no telegraph wires before except for in the book. But you've seen the telegraph wire before, haven't you? They sent messages across the lines and they would type them out. It's just like that. And they control the vital action of every part of the system. All the organs of motion are governed by the communications they receive from the brain. The brain nerves which communicate with the entire system 
are the, what does that say? The only medium through which heaven can communicate with man. Why do you think the devil wants you eating that dark chocolate? Why do you think, go, just go to any one of these gas stations or these convenience stores. Have you noticed in the last, let's say, five years that the amount of energy drinks have multiplied threefold? Brothers and sisters, it's not just by happenstance, it's by design. Whatever disturbs the circulation of the electric currents in the nervous system lessens the strength of the vital powers and the result is a, a, a deadening of the sensibilities of the mind. It deadens the sensibilities of your mind. Ah, have mercy. All should guard the senses, lest Satan gain victory over them, for these are the avenues to the soul. How can we afford to participate in these practices that are promoted by the world that clearly God has told us are harmful to us. They decrease our blood flow. They render our brains impotent and thereby put us in a position where we can become the prey for the devil. By the way, as I'm talking about blood circulation, it just comes back to me. You got to hit on this one. The skinny jeans. And the tight sisters. I can't talk about your tights. I'm going to talk about your tights. It doesn't even make a difference. You know, I had a young man in my, in my school not too, not too long ago. Young man. Guy's about 20, 20 odd years, 20, 23. Telling me that his friend is developing prostate cancer. The next thing you know, he's got a urinary tract infection. Brothers and sisters, do you know that they've done studies? One study, they took 2,000 fashionable men that wear skinny jeans. They found out that these things decrease the blood flow, hinder the blood circulation, and they're the cause of urinary tract infections for men, twisted te testicles, and also bringing on the onset of prostate cancer. How in the world are we seeing young men, 23, 24, 25, with prostate cancer? And why? Because you're following after the rudimentary principles of this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Wanting to be fashionable so that you destroy your reproductive organs? It's ridiculous. I call them self-castration systems. That's what I call them. Because other studies show that they act, men actually are getting twisted testicles because of skinny jeans. They're really worth it. And women that love to wear your tights, I don't know why everybody thinks they're working out right now when you're not even working out. <laughs> but you got your tights on, right? You know, these things have tenfold problems for you. If you just start on the, the muscular system, because those tights operate the way that they do on your body, the muscles within your legs feel as though they don't have to do the work that they would usually do in the supporting of your torso. Thereby, you lose elasticity of these muscles. Are you following me so far? So, you're really going to need them tight. <laughs> because now, the tights are actually needed to do the work that your muscles used to do previously. Not to mention the fact that the restricting of the blood circulation to the lower extremities of your body 
is the means for developing all manner of disease and health conditions within the reproductive organs. But it's fashionable. Brothers and sisters, there's nothing fashionable about having to lay up in a bed. And all because what? Because we refuse to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. All because we refuse to trust in God with all our hearts. The multitude of evil that God could save us from if we would simply accept his counsel. A calm, clear brain and steady nerve are dependent upon a well-balanced circulation of the blood. Keep the heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Should the Lord work a miracle to restore the wonderful machinery which human beings have impaired through their own careless and inattention and their indulgence of appetite and passions by doing the very things that the Lord has told them they should not do, he would be ministering to sin, which is the transgression of his own law. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm a human being, so I'm fully engaged in the experience of humanity. But you have to be honest. It's got to baffle you. When we have the blessing of a health message, of the caliper that God has given to us, and then you have brothers and sisters.